the question of whether the rule of law extends to everyone in the country, including a former president, was the subject of a high stakes and pivotal hearing today in a federal courthouse in Washington, D.C. Attorneys for Donald Trump and federal prosecutors argued over Trump's claim that the federal election case against him should be dismissed because everything he did in the post-election period was in his official capacity as president. The three-judge panel that is hearing the case appeared skeptical of that claim. Both the ex-president and the special counsel, Jack Smith, were in the courtroom today. Trump has been claiming that President Joe Biden has been forcing him to appear in court, which is not true. He did have no obligation to appear at today's hearing, and there's nothing to suggest that his prosecution by the special counsel is politically motivated. Trump's attorney, John Sauer, argued that allowing the prosecution of Donald Trump would, quote, open a Pandora's box. But the judges pushed back on that and many of the arguments he was making. Trump's lawyer also argued that the president could only be prosecuted if he was impeached and convicted by the Senate first, no matter what he did, no matter how criminal his conduct was. Listen to this exchange with Judge Florence Pan who makes a reference to SEAL Team 6. Could a president who ordered SEAL Team 6 to assassinate a political rival who was not impeached, would he be subject to criminal prosecution? If he were impeached and convicted first. And so, so your answer is, is, no. is My answer is qualified, yes. I've asked you a, a series of hypotheticals about criminal actions that could be taken by a president and could be considered official acts. And I've asked you, would such a president be subject to criminal prosecution if he's not impeached or convicted? Requirement. And your answer, your yes or no answer is no. I, I believe I said qualified yes if he's impeached or convicted first. Uh, we may my be saying question the same thing. was, okay, so he's not impeached or conviction, been convicted. Let's put that aside. You're saying a president could sell pardons, could sell military secrets, could order SEAL Team 6 to assassinate a, a political rival. Sale of military secrets strikes me as something that might not be held to be an official act. The sale of pardons is something that's come up historically okay. and was not prosecuted. But your brief so. says goes on like that. Even the one Republican appointee on the panel, Judge Karen Henderson, expressed skepticism that Trump was acting in his role as president when he tried to overturn the election results. I think it's paradoxical to say that his constitutional duty to take care that the laws be faithfully executed allows him to violate criminal laws. Representing the Justice Department, Assistant Special Counsel James Pierce, he said that the case puts the justice system and the country in uncharted territory, but that's all the more reason that there should be criminal accountability for Donald Trump. Never before has there been allegations that a sitting president has with private individuals and using the levers of power, sought to fundamentally subvert the democratic republic and the electoral system. Uh, and frankly, if that kind of fact pattern arises again, uh, I think it would be awfully scary if there weren't some sort of mechanism by which to reach that uh, in, criminally. A decision by the appeals court could come within days, and after that, whoever loses, either Donald Trump or the Justice Department, is expected to appeal to the Supreme Court. One way or the other, this is getting to the Supreme Court. And that's where we start this hour with MSNBC legal analyst Lisa Rubin back with me at the table, plus former top prosecutor at the Department of Justice Andrew Weissman and NBC News justice reporter Ryan Riley is here. He was inside the courthouse for us today. Good afternoon. Welcome to all of you. Thank you for uh, being with us. Uh, Andrew, I don't know that much shocks you these days, but you were actually shocked by this argument that the, the president can do what he wants to do criminally while he's president. You know, what I would say is I was stepping back and listening to um, you and to Lisa and to the uh, comments uh, from MS MSNBC all day. And, you know, if you step back and think about what we are experiencing, we had an argument today where the former president's counsel said that he could uh, engage in bribery, he could actually engage in murder as a sitting president, and unless he was impeached and convicted, he could get away with that. We are about to, in two days, have closing arguments in a civil fraud trial where the former president has already been found liable for fraud. A week from today, there will be a second trial 
by E. Jean Carroll in a defamation case where a jury, not prosecutors, not a judge, but a jury has already found that he engaged in sexual assault and framed um, the uh, E. Jean Carroll, the plaintiff there. Um, the, this is not the unluckiest man in the world. This is somebody who we really have to ask ourselves, who is voting for him and why? Um, because there will always be people like Donald Trump in the world. That that is a given. Um, the, that the, those kinds of people exist and will exist. But what does it say about this constellation of cases where so many different types of people and jurors, grand jurors, trial jurors have found him responsible? It is not a vast left-wing mm -hmm. conspiracy. Um, against him. Uh, and today's arguments, which in many ways were just so shocking to hear someone say that when it has been assumed for so long that a former president is not above the law. And it's clear that's, of course, what the court will say here. Uh, Lisa, you have been involved in this the whole time, all day, while it's been happening. And, and, and like Andrew, I'm curious, uh, after having watched you all day, how this is crystallizing for you. There, there were, for those of us who are not lawyers, watching this was, there were some things that, that Donald Trump's team said that were really quite shocking. They were shocking, and yet, at the same point, they went down differently. You know, Ellie, in October of 2019, when I was just a behind-the-scenes staffer on The Rachel Maddow Show, I went to hear an oral argument here in New York at the Second Circuit. That's the federal appeals court that oversees federal trial courts in New York and Connecticut and Vermont. And I watched a lawyer named William Consovoy argue for former President Trump that he could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot someone, and there was nothing that the NYPD could do about that. He made that argument in the context of a case where the Manhattan District Attorney's Office was seeking financial and tax records. Right as they were investigating what the former president had done before he was president. And when Will Consovoy said he could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue, shoot someone, and the NYPD could do nothing, there was widespread laughter in the courtroom. Some right. of it was nervous laughter, right. but everyone right. laughed. Today, by contrast, when John Sauer made a very similar argument that the Navy SEAL Team 6 mm -hmm. could seek to assassinate Trump's political rival at his urging or direction and not face any accountability unless he was already impeached or convicted, you couldn't hear a sound. And I think part of that is because we are somewhat inured to Trump making these arguments, and yet we also take him a lot more seriously in some ways as a danger, as a threat, than we did even in October of 2019 because of everything that has come since then. And so what I am sitting here wrestling with is both how little has changed, mm. but also how much it, it, has changed. It was remarkable. Um, Ryan Riley, one of the arguments that Donald Trump's uh, attorneys made today was if you do uh, open a president to charges of anything that happened, anything he did while he was president, uh, presidents will be hamstrung. They will simply not make decisions because they're of fear of prosecution. It was one of the very, very few moments in this, uh, in this hearing today where Donald Trump reacted. He sort of stood there uh, stone-faced most of the day, but he did have have a reaction at that moment. Yeah, you know, Donald Trump also was scribbling these notes to his lawyers on a yellow uh, legal pad. He was mostly stoic when uh, these uh, when the special counsel's team was arguing, um, but then, you know, his lawyer when his lawyer got up, he was sort of uh, had jotted down these notes, and he uh, was sort of more animated during that. I think the most excitement Donald Trump saw in this entire proceeding was when his lawyer said uh, that he was winning in the polls. That was something that he liked. So, you know, I, of course, you're sitting there, and there's a bunch of these these citations, these cases that, you know, folks like Andrew and Lisa are immediately going to know, and maybe even people like me without a law degree might not immediately uh, come to mind. But a lot of this did seem to just be sort of arguments start to win over Donald Trump's head, and then he really liked those political moments. That's where he's sort of shaking his head vigorously, where, yeah, I'm winning in all of the polls, right? Like, that's what he was sort of reacting to. He got a little bit more, you know, animated in terms of what he wanted to. It seemed like, you know, I, I interpreted it as his lawyer ended up slipping in some arguments on rebuttal that uh, that Donald Trump wanted him to make, right? Because he was passing all of those notes back and forth. Of course, it's impossible oh, to say for sure. Right. Yeah, I, I couldn't read, you know, obviously that's what was intriguing. on the thing there, but yeah.